I hope you're excited today because I am. Today we are starting pastels. I love them, love them. They're so easy to use, easy to find. They're not expensive. They're used for both drawing and painting. They're just about one of the best things that you can use that doesn't make a huge mess. Don't need to have the best pastels there are. Everything works good. And these are oil pastels. There are several different. There are soft pastels, hard pastels, oil pastels, and pencil pastels, which is just a pastel surrounded by wood. But the oil pastels, I find, are the um, less, less mess, more control over it, and then your results will make you happier. So really, by like twisting and turning and tipping them sideways, you get different effects. You can use fine, precise lines. You can use broad, sweeping lines. You can use solid layers, dense layers, soft layers, feathering. They're basically powdered pigments, which is another word for color. We've talked about that before, that are put together with a binder, very similar to the pencils. A binder is a glue type thing that keeps something together. There are many techniques that are also similar to the, um, the pencils that we, the colored pencils that we used. On my board, you're going to recognize some of these. This is linear strokes, which are just straight lines, like in the colored pencils. Then we have side strokes, which you cannot do with the pencil. When you hold your pastel crayon sideways and make those broad sweeping lines, one of my favorite techniques. Blending is exciting with these. They just, it just goes, it pops, it, it glows. Feathering is when you lightly layer colors over each other, creating a very soft, almost like when you're looking through, if you're laying on your tummy in the grass and seeing it move. Layering one on top of the other, which sort of speaks for itself. Cross-hatching, again, using lines going one way and another way to create depth in your artwork. There's little spots sometimes that need color. And when you just do that, it's just enough. Just enough of that negative space comes through to make it look really well. Pointillism, dot, 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 dot. Again, there are going to be areas where you just want that little touch of color. And this is how you do it. And scrumbling, which is way different. You just go in circles and make your backgrounds and make your skies and, and finish that vase just around and around and around. But you can also create a specially designed background with the scrumbling where you have one color and then you maybe just do a little feathering over the top of it. Maybe just blend it a little bit, up to you. This is one medium that you're gonna be working with that you have a lot of control over. You can make it do things. Over rubbing it will destroy it because it just makes it flat. You can practice that too so that you, you know, learn how you don't do that. I had to learn that way too. It's, it's all about doing it over and over again and not getting too upset. Just going, oh well, let's try it again. So if you're ready, I'm ready to try it right now. I've told you how you can use your pastels, and now we're about to see exactly how that works. This is left over from a class of mine, but it has just enough space to practice without getting a little, you know, tired of it before you get to your project. Pick any color that you like. Remember, they're really bold. They don't hide their colors, so whatever you choose is going to work. So I said you can twist them and you can turn them and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to start with linear strokes. And again, Miss Linda has a little bucket of broken pieces because we're going to be using those. And they do get a little dusty. We'll call that dust even though we know it's not. It's just the rubbing of the other ones. So I'll start out with green and do my linear strokes. You're going to see that this is very, very similar to what we learned in our um, colored pencils. Linear strokes. Now, just because it's straight doesn't mean that it can't be short or thick. And notice I'm using, let's use this part of it and get the thick ones or double lines. 
There you go. Look at that. Throw some orange in there. And linear strokes are not always straight. They can go all over the place. There you go. Linear strokes. Side strokes, I love, I love, I love. I'm going to get a red and a light blue. For some reason, light blue goes really quick, everyone. I'll warn you about that. Your light blue will disappear before your eyes. How about these colors? So, side strokes are like holding it, pinching it, and going sideways. There we go. This way. And the red. Let's see. I think I'll do straight. See, even though you have a little bit of it on the crayon, it doesn't matter because it will give it just a little bit of extra color. And, you know, using pastels all about the blending of colors and colors next to each other. Speaking of which, let's do our blending. Exciting colors. Purple. Let's get that yellow again. And how about a blue? Let's see if we can do this. You know what? I'm going to exchange that. Let's do a lime green. So blending is you're going to put one color over the other. You can do your side strokes. And then look at how that darkens it up right away. It is, you're going to love these. Oil pastels are so much fun. Let's get one up the middle. And then let's do a sweeping band. Now this is when you're using your fingers. You can use a Q-tip if you don't like getting schmutz on your finger. You can use a talion if you have a talion. These are not totally necessary. If you're a professional, absolutely. Or we can dip our finger in a little bit of lotion, a little bit, rub it around your fingertips. You don't want to get it all over your hands. Oil on oil will make it move quicker. Ready? This is the best part. It almost explodes. Use my thumb. Use any finger you like. Look at that. So can you imagine when you're doing a grassy field or, or I don't know, the sun bursting from the sky? You could have something like that. Yes, you're going to get it on your hands. Keep your little, not really wet, but just a little bit of wet towel next to you to keep it. Or you can use a paper towel. All right, let's see what's next on our plan. Ooh, feathering. Feathering is linear strokes, but right next to each other. So I'm going to do light and dark green. It's almost like you're making a feather. There you go, feathering. And let's do a pink over the top going in a different direction. I'm going to turn my paper. Feather, 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 feather. It's linear strokes, but very gentle, and they're actually just going in different directions. They will blend themselves. Let's try yellow over the top just to see what happens. There you go. Now you've got some feathering going and some color changing as well. Layering, let's use a pink, a lime. We'll go with the pastel colors. Ah, get it, pastel colors. <laughs> pastel colors. So I'm going to take and put my pink across and then I'm going to do some linear strokes and let's throw some feathering in there it starts to change color every time i say we need a dark blue just just to see let's see now i'm not pressing too hard because i don't want to remove all of my well, what I just did is bringing us right into our next one, which is cross hatching. So I'll keep the blue. And again, you'll remember these from our colored pencil classes. Cross hatching, one direction, another direction. You will get pastels on your hands. It will come off with soap and water. Mm, let's do orange, they're complementary colors. Not sure that they're that gorgeous on top of each other. Reminds me of that tiger on the cereal box. So I need to brighten this up. How about a little bit of gold? There are some some different colors in here that you can use that you can brighten it up. These are a brand new set. Let's try the gold and see. Oh, that helps. Now it looks a little more like fall colors. 
pointillism is what we talked about the last time that Miss Linda not real fond of. I'll use a new one. Pointillism is dot, 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 dot. A little easier with the pastels. This is when you're going to fill in an area or you want to create an area that you need is going to, you know, that's going to need more color in it. Let me put that back. Ah, uh, you know what I did not, I do have it right here. I'll use this. I did have it. You can check your colors, especially on your old ones to see. Blues, there's two different colors, blues. You'll want to know when you're working. So this is my blue over here. Let's grab, a, not a red, uh, let's do green. Miss Linda deciding what colors. Remember the closer the dots, the deeper the color. When you're looking at your artwork from a distance, you'll, you'll be able to see this. The farther away, the more open, the more of the white paper or the negative space that you're going to see. And scrumbling is used for backgrounds. You can take and let's do a very light scrumble. Here's a really light. I'm going to scrumble this. It's just for backgrounds and put a darker pink on the top. Let's see what happens. Now, this is a little different than the colored pencils for sure. So this is your background. See how simple that was? You can also do it where if you have a background, do your broad strokes, whoopsies. And then you can put a design in the background and you can actually take and move that design if you like. Scrumbling is definitely with pastels for the background or for something very, very large, large like a sky, which is a background. So now that we've done this, I think one of the most beautiful things, and you just saw the picture of it, is a peacock feather. Now, I treat my peacock feathers very nicely. I keep them in between. Look at this. Isn't that amazing? There are colors in there that you can't see with your eyes right now. When you look at the close-up picture, you'll see that these little barbs sticking out all over it are just, it's almost like a little tiny tree. So I will keep this on my white paper so that everyone can see what I'm looking at. I'm going to probably use mostly of my new pastels. I'm going to move this out of the way. I won't need it. The first thing you want to do is to do a sketch. Miss Linda's going to look through her papers of things. There we go. You do a sketch. I didn't trace it. It looks like I did because it's the same size. Draw big with pastels because you need lots of room to get that color moving. So I drew it first, but not details because we're going to be using the pastels for our details. And again, have more than one piece of paper so that you have a, a little cushion underneath that. So, oh, this one is going to get it organized. I have all these colors to choose from. I'm going to look at this. It does not have to look exactly like the color that you see. If you feel like putting a lot of yellow, I put yellow and pinks because I can actually see pinks and yellows in there. There are a lot of greens. So I think I'll just pull my greens out to make it more convenient or make it easier for us. And browns, I'll use these two browns. Maybe I'll use a little bit of this. Let's try this. Ooh, that's good too. It's movement. When you're using these pastels, especially with something so natural as this, it's all about your movements. Now these have some browns up here. We're gonna be doing all of the blending and everything like that. This will take you longer than you think. You can do a, like a rough copy of it and then go back. So see the browns? Let's get those little greens in. And realistically, the little greens go like this. Deep, 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 deep. There you go. Now I'm gonna do this for you. So if, then if you go through afterwards and you feather them out with your finger actually, you'll start getting that look. Now, up we go. Just follow the flow. I did the center first in these so that I could have a guide of where to go. In my drawing, I did that. I just gave myself a flow. Where do I follow? Where does the colors go? 
Start out with your light colors. Don't go hard and deep at first. You can always put more color on, but once the oil pastels are on, guess what? They are on. The center, I saved that for you because there is purple and deep blue and turquoise. There is not a turquoise. This is the closest to a turquoise. So I've done the light green. Now I'm gonna go in closer. And I'm looking at my feather, and you can look at the photograph. And let your hands, just glance down at your hands. It's almost like a sketching. All right, and I put some brown in there, but I see orange. There is a light orange. Let's see which one. Um, I'll try this one first. I think that's just about right. Then I'm gonna put the tiny bit of this. Every color that you add is going to add something to the end result of your drawing. You may not see it now. I actually need a little bit of lotion, so I'm gonna put a little bit of lotion on my finger so I can smoosh this. That's my word for it. A Little bit of brown to give direction because it does emanate, radiate out from the center. Now, I'm going to just gently, only two times, don't go over something more than, look at that, look at that. If you go over it too many times, here, let me show you. I'm going to flip this over. Let's say I'm doing my feathers and I've got my orange and my brown. This is something really important to know. And my other browns and then that funny color again. Now, if I go over and over, look what happens. It just goes flat. It just, it just, you're rubbing, you're just pretty much rubbing all of the color or the pigment into the paper and onto your finger. You lose that brightness. You lose that that definition, that beautiful. All right, blue. Miss Linda couldn't think of what to call the beautiful. It is a beautiful color design. All right, we're gonna go down here again. Now there is purple in there. So I'm gonna get that purple in. You'll see, the, the, the close-up picture will show you for sure. And believe it or not, it looks like there's black, but there is a very, very, very deep blue in mine almost black and that's what I'm going to use and I'm going to very lightly go in there is no negative space showing through this all right so up 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 now it's not nearly as dark as that so I think I will come in with a black and put in some linear lines to get it there we go all right look at that I'm on my way. I could sit here and finish this. I'm gonna clean the black off my fingers. That's one thing, dark colors you wanna wipe off your hands. So I'm gonna finish the top of this a little bit for you, and then I'm gonna let you all get to work. This is a really cool gr green too. All right, this will show you, where's that cool brown? It needs the brown, without the brown, there's actually kind of a brown rim here, too. Without the brown, it's not going to be the peacock feather. And once you do your two times at the most, I'm going to get another little bit of lotion on my fingertips. Rub them together and watch. Just one smush. Look at that. If I go over it, what's going to happen? It will not look like a feather. It will look like a feather that was sitting under the mud. Ooh, nice and dirty. Now I'm gonna go around where that rim is also. Simple. A little too much green there for Miss Linda, so she's gonna do it a little bit more. Now, this is not perfectly done. I will finish it and I will show you. Do the same things along your barbs and you'll have the most amazing, beautiful peacock feather. The colors are amazing. You are gonna do amazing. And I am really, really, really anxious to see the work when you're done. Thanks for pastelling with me. So we're going to do something beautiful with those peacock feathers. I'm anxious to see them when you send them to me. I love seeing your artwork. 
practice your different techniques, find what works best for you. Practice, 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 practice. I'm sure some of you are like, all right, already enough with the practice, but I can't say it enough. Practice makes you confident. Practice does not make you perfect. Practice makes you confident. And that's what we need to be, creative and confident and proud of what we do because we should be proud of who we are. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next class.